Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and today I'm working on the hydronic heating system for my garage. Uh, in front of me I've got some various parts I've been collecting, things like uh, circulator pumps, uh, shutoff valves, pipe flanges, uh, pump controllers, and over here I've got the actual heater itself, that's a 7,000 watt electric heater. Now I'm going to be going with electric because I've already got some pretty good power running to the garage uh, for things like an electric car charger, arc welding, that sort of thing. So I'm going with a nice beefy electrical system rather than using, for example, natural gas, which I'd have to run out here uh, additionally. Also, I'm trying to get away uh, from fossil fuels and I'll be able to use my banked grid tie solar power uh, to run everything out here, including the electric boiler. So let's take a look at the parts I got here so far. Okay, that right there is the boiler. It's uh, 7,000 watt, it's uh, 30 amp, uh, 240 volt, and it uses half inch pipe connections in and out and it's flow activated, so you need a pump to pump the uh, antifreeze water mix through there and that will activate it based on the temperature setting that you've got. Uh, I bought this used for 300 bucks. It's 500 bucks new at the store. I've also got two circulating pumps. This is a fractional horsepower pump. Uh, it's got three speed settings. It's uh, 120 volt powered. Um, and then it uses a, a bolt-on flange, which is nice because I can, for example, solder copper to that flange and then just bring the uh, pump up, set it in place, and bolt it in there. Uh, makes it easy to uh, shut off with the valves that are built into these flanges and would be easy to replace if I have to do that. Now the other thing is that I have two of these pumps, a primary and a secondary. The reason why is one of them is really uh, just for running the fluid through the heater and the other one actually circulates it out to the PEX manifold and the PEX loops. Uh, also this one here has a little bit different style flange connection. Uh, it has these uh, garden hose connectors here so that's going to be used for filling and draining the system right there as well. I'm also using some spacers that uh, bolt onto the pipe and then uses a 3 8 inch bolt down to a plate I can screw to the plywood. And what this does is it allows me to space all of the components away from the plywood. Uh, I'm building this entire system down on a four foot by four foot square piece of plywood. And a pump is a lot bigger, a lot thicker than a piece of uh, three quarter inch copper pipe. So this connects everything to the plywood and it also gives room for the, the pumps and the flanges and everything else. Okay, I'm up on a ladder now trying to give you the bird's eye view. I've uh, collected all the parts. Now, I could have just bought all these parts uh, at the store already put together, um, except uh, all of this, not including the heater and not including the manifold, just all this other stuff here, but pre-assembled, was $1,600 at the home improvement store. Uh, I looked at the parts that were in it, added them up in my head, and said I could probably build the same for about half the cost. So the way this works here is the hot liquid's gonna come out of the heater. It's gonna go through that pipe. Um, one thing I'm still missing, I need another thermostat. That's gonna go right there, or a thermometer rather, so I can see how hot the water coming out is. Uh, then there's the pressure tank and the uh, air remover, get the bubbles out, followed by the pressure relief valve and then the circulating pump uh, for the heater, including the connections for uh, filling and draining the system. Uh, coming on down here to a purge valve, and then that's going to go to, do, 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 out to uh, the, the, the feed end, the hot end, the supply end of the PEX. It's gonna go through all, all through my concrete floor. Do, 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 do and then come back to the return end. And from the return end, I'm gonna come back to this pump here, around here, through the Y strainer. There's gonna be another uh, thermometer so I can, uh, I'll be able to see the difference between um, the thermometer up here and the one down here for how much temperature drop. So how much heat uh, came out through the floor. And then it'll head back to the heater again and that will be con uh, that's just controlled by flow, uh, which is from the pumps, and the pumps turn off from this taco controller here. 
So basically that gets wired up to uh, a thermostat and then that will turn uh, the two pumps on and off based on the temperature setting in there. Also the, uh, the heater itself here, oop, let's get focus. Um, that has a temperature setting on it uh, as well. So you can output 100 degree water, you could output 120 degree water. But you said it right there, I'll be working with relatively low temperatures. So I'm gonna experiment, I'll start off probably setting that to uh, about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Or uh, let's see, what's that come to? 40 degrees centigrade and go from there. So I've already dry fit all these pipes together. I, I measured, I cut the pipes, I kind of test fit them. Uh, frankly, all that took quite a bit of time, especially since I've, I've really never done this sort of thing before. I did practice sweating a couple of pipes and now I'm starting to actually sweat the pipes for the project. So here, for example, you can see the solder on the left side of that elbow and they're not all that pretty but it looks like uh, they'll be solid at least. So I'll hopefully I'll get better as I go as well. Now one other thing I was thinking about is I did just recently pick up an old indoor outdoor wood fired boiler on Craigslist. And I like the idea of possibly being uh, add into the system with a wood boiler. So I'll need to have a, uh, a spot reserved for future expansion. So I think what I might do is add another T uh, maybe maybe just a, a purge valve, um, just like this one right here, uh, except I'd add it in here or here so that I could basically uh, bypass the electric heater and instead put in heat from a boiler. So I might stub a little something out here or here. So I'm going to save those two pieces to uh, until the last thing um, while working on this. So if you've been watching my YouTube channel for a while, you probably know that uh, I'm not so much a, a master of everything as much as I just like to learn new things. This is the first time I've done a major plumbing project and uh, especially one that's uh, for heating. So I'm kind of learning as I go. Uh, if you have uh, positive comments, ideas, please let me know. Leave them in the comments. Thanks. Until next time, stay charged up.